Hello, Skylar Collins here. I wanted to take a moment to talk about the um, article I wrote recently at everything-voluntary.com titled Voluntarism Transcends Anarchism. Um, it, not really an article, it was more a collection of thoughts, just kind of me uh, brain spewing some, some ideas that I've had. Um, I hope to probably write more on the ideas that I put out a little bit more in the future. Um, I just want to kind of talk about those ideas a little bit um, so that I had something on my YouTube channel as well. Now, when I approach um, voluntarism, and it, and it wasn't always this way, but um, I would say lately, probably the last four or five months, really since I published my book, um, the idea that voluntarism is a means, um, it's not the end. Um, the free society, out, outwardly, I guess, the free society is one end, but I think also um, finding the inner inner peace with ourselves, um, with our families, and whatnot, with our neighbors, is also an end, uh, whereas voluntarism is a means. Um, when I published my book, Everything Voluntary, in the introduction I did talk about how um, voluntarism is more than a political philosophy, it's a life philosophy, it's a social philosophy, it's a parenting philosophy, um, and so I just kind of want to talk about that a little bit more. The way I look at it is the what I would call the horizontal plane of voluntarism includes um, the political philosophy of anarchism, the um, free market philosophy, or what you would call capitalism or anti-capitalism, depending on <laughs> depending on who you are. Um, so we can just kind of put those together and call it anarcho-capitalism or free market anarchism. Um, and then also you've got kind of in the middle you've got more the, the individual, um, the cultural aspect of it. Um, you could call it spiritual though, you, you know, it, you know there is a spiritual dimension to it I think. I'm not going to call it religious, um, but I think I can call it spiritual. I, I think those things are exclusive. Um, ideas, exclusive, um, uh, I don't know what the word is, I'm not that educated. Anyways, um, and then you've got the, um, the the parenting. So this is more from the individual downward to, to our offspring. Um, the parenting, um, and of course, parenting itself encompasses childhood education, childhood nutrition, um, you know, just all kinds of stuff with, with your children. So it, it definitely includes all that. So I kind of I kind of look out um, and I see this horizontal plane of voluntarism, like I said, um, and kind of encompassing all these things because, and the reason it does is because you have what really, I mean, it, it needs to be explained, I think, a little bit, probably needs to be explained a little bit um, to a lot of people. Maybe a lot of people kind of comes across, but I would I would call it the voluntary principle. I think you can say that when it comes to voluntarism, what, what it is, voluntarism is all about, is the voluntary principle. What that means is our relations with other people should be based on mutual consent, should be voluntary. In other words, um, we should not be using force and coercion and aggression against other people, including our children, um, including the smaller and weaker members of our society, definitely. Um, so, you know, I, I like that idea of the voluntary principle. I'll, I'll try to write on that in the future, maybe expound some more ideas on that. Anyway, so we've got, um, within each of these, you've got the, the, the market and politics. Now, in a free society, you really don't have a political structure um, as you would under the state, um, a monopoly provider of law. Um, so it kind of merges with the market because law, justice, security, these things are all um, provided, produced, I should say, not provided, but produced uh, by entrepreneurs, uh, by, by profit-seeking and profit-maximizing self-interested individuals. Um, and then you've got the, the individual, the culture, cultural aspects, and then, of course, the parenting. It kind of all really just kind of bleeds in together um, from where I'm sitting, though, where I am in my own personal understanding of and everybody's different everybody 
is either more or less um, understanding of, of these things. Um, you know, there's plenty of other people that have better understanding of it than me. It's kind of where I'm at. Um, each one of these um, sort of areas has kind of a vertical structure to it. What I, what I call in the article, I call it the vertical plane. And so um, there are a set of ideas, and these ideas can be expanded upon definitely for each of these. And so I just want to take a moment to talk about each of them. Um, with the, uh, the politics and the market, or the anarcho-capitalism portion of voluntarism, um, you've got such things as nonviolent resistance, um, civil disobedience, um, uh, and in all of these, and I'll, I'll mention this in each one, but you have what's called nonviolent communication. So the way that we communicate with other people, either out in society or within our families, um, and really with ourselves, the way we communicate with ourselves, the way we realize ourselves, um, I think there's, there's benefits to, to nonviolence, even, even in that regard. Um, the turn the other cheek kind of thing. And, and when, I, when I look at that, and now that specifically is kind of a, kind of a Christian thing, but it doesn't have to be. Um, I was reading some interesting things on turn the other cheek and some of the other seemingly strange type of commandments given in the New Testament or I should say counsel, not really commandments, um, that were designed to really get the aggressor to maybe rethink what they're doing. Okay, so when you turn the other cheek, it's to offer them um, to kind of prick their hearts, and for you, you're telling them, I'm not going to resist you, I'm going to turn the other cheek, and that person is then supposed to kind of kind of be touched and, and say, you know, what am I doing? And then it causes them to kind of rethink. So I think that that goes along with the voluntary principle. I kind of like that, and that can certainly be explored and expanded upon. Um, strategic pacifism, I think, is another one. I don't, I don't think, I definitely don't think that voluntarism requires pacifism. Um, under the non-aggression and the self-ownership principles, it is legitimate and ethical to retaliate with force up to and including the level of force you know used against you it's certainly ethical to do that within um, what you would say proportion proportionate to the amount of force used against you um, but I don't know that's always wise um, nor do I think really um, I guess putting a lot of focus on that is what we as voluntarists want to do because if we want to promote the voluntary principle, we want to promote nonviolence and promote not using force, then I think that we need to come up with solutions, nonviolent solutions, to other people's uh, aggression. I think that is an area, um, a theoretical area, I guess, that could use some exploration and um, you know, I'm gonna I'm gonna try to do that as well. Um, I think it's I think it's important. Um, I think I, I I think that voluntarism and the voluntary principle highly encourages that. Again, it doesn't require it, um, and this is kind of where it meshes, kind of where where the the anarcho capitalism meshes with the the culture in making us better people, so that we can respond with solutions, real nonviolent solutions to problems, and some of those problems are force and aggression by others. So so that's that's something that's in there too that kind of goes above um, the political philosophy and really kind of comes down to how is it we're going to respond to the aggression of others. Um, nonviolent resistance, civil disobedience, which can lead to nonviolent resistance, a strategic form of pacifism. There are I was reading today some things about uh, Mahatma Gandhi and the uh, the nonviolence that he believed in. I think his was more philosophical than it was strategic, but we can still learn a lot from him strategically um, on the ways that he 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 did things. Um, and there's been there's been other there's been definitely other individuals in history, Martin Luther King Jr. and, and the things that he did. Um, I uh, I published in my book a chapter by 
Carl Meyer, who was a, a tax resistor. Um, he's spent his fair share, fair share of time in prison for that um, and in handcuffs. Um, never lifted a finger against anybody. And, uh, you know, that kind of thing, I think, I don't, I don't know that we necessarily need to make martyrs out of ourselves, especially if we have a family. Our families need us, and so I willfully submit um, to the laws. I think that's, that's a good thing to do considering the higher law that I believe I'm following. Um, and, and so there's some considerations there. Um, that's why I emphasize strategic instead of philosophical pacifism on that. Um, and then, like I said, working out uh, peaceful solutions to violence. I mean, yeah, we could, we would, we would, we would not have the ethical dilemma by responding with violence and force to somebody else's initiation of force. But I don't know. That's always the best thing to do. And I think voluntarism, the voluntary principle, encourages us to look beyond that um, and to find peaceful solutions. So that's 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 kind of what this is about. Um, and, and like I said, I hope to, to write more about these things um, going forward um, on that. So now the next section here um, that I talked about was culture. Culture, um, it, it's really like, like everything with voluntarism, it, which is an individualistic um, philosophy. It does start with the individual. It starts at looking at ourselves and finding ways that we can um, become better people um, emphasizing the voluntary principle. I think using force again and again, even in self-defense, it can it can do things to you. Now, I never served in the military, um, you know, but I've, I've read accounts from people who have that that talk about, I mean, even 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 when when you're just responding with force, it does something to you. Um, so I, I think those, those are considerations that we need to that we need to make as well. Um, we also, on that regard, we need to we need to sort of um, help other people see the errors of their ways and, and to borrow um, a religious phrase, preach repentance um, to those who would use force um, and educate. Education is a big one. Educate ourselves, help educate others. Um, and then again, in this section, I do include um, nonviolent communication now. I make mistakes on this all the time, especially like, you know, places on Facebook that are so easy to do and you, when you type something, um, it's easy to inflame. Um, I'm certainly guilty of that. Something that I need to work on. Um, Nonviolent communication and, and improving our communication skills is going to help us to reach out to people and to help people understand where we're coming from and, and really get them to listen because, because we are being reasonable and we are being peaceful and respectful and that kind of thing. So again, I've been guilty of it rather recently too and something I'm, I'm a bit ashamed of. Um, but all we can do is, is look at that, look at our mistakes and move on. And so th this cultural aspect um, under voluntarism really kind of helps us look at that and bring that together um, to do that. So um, finding enlightenment. Now there's a lot, of, a lot of ways you can do that and there's a lot of ways you can do that within a lot of different religions, um, Christian religions, um, Muslim, Buddhist, um, and even non-religious um, individuals and, and things. You, there's all ways, There's all kinds of ways that you can find enlightenment, and I, th and, I, and I think voluntarism kind of encourages us personally to do that, because I think having that sort of um, backbone behind things it helps us to um, let me let me put this another way. Being um, at the point where, where we have that inner peace and we have that spiritual alignment, it helps us to stand our ground, I guess you could say, and to be seen as somebody who is principled and as, as trustworthy um, and, and that sort of stuff. And so I think, I think those things are important. I think, I think voluntarism encourages a lot of that too, and, I, and that's, that's another area that I definitely um, want to write more on later on. I, I definitely welcome other people writing on it too. Um, and if they want to send me anything on that in that regard, I definitely I'll publish it at, at the website. So, um, so there, there's that. Now, the final thing I want to talk about um, is the parenting and, and what I'll really probably call radical unschooling, just because it's kind of something that's already established. 
out there. Um, now, I would I would say that most radical unschoolers do not identify as politically as voluntarists or as anarchists or anything like that. There are some, definitely. I've met them. Um, I've met them online and whatnot. Um, but I don't think a lot of them do. Uh, but but there's a big part of their lives, their parenting philosophy, that is that is perfectly compatible and attuned to voluntarism. Um, and so I, you know, this is something I discovered about a year ago um, when I when I stopped. You know, I was conflicted. I was I was I was preaching non-aggression out, outside the house, but I was using aggression in my own house with my kids. My son was since he was about three to five. Um, you know, I would spank him, and I would feel really bad when I did that. And I would, I would, I would, I would practice and try not to be angry while I did it, uh, because I didn't want the anger to be um, behind it. I wanted it to be um, a methodical response, an act of discipline that I that I believed was necessary. Um, but thankfully, I had the opportunity to change, and so I I, I want that opportunity for other people. Um, I've definitely said some things where, I, you know, I equated um, hitting with your, your kid with hitting your wife, and people who do that should should be punished, such, such as burning in hell and that kind of stuff. And I regret that now because it is very easy to take something like that out of context of the rest of what I believe in, and it and it's inflammatory, and it's going back to that nonviolent communication. It's definitely not something that's going to get people interested in listening to the message at all. So. Um, but, you know, I, I can't say that's, that's not how I feel, but a stronger feeling is wanting to give people the opportunity to repent and to change. Um, to change, to see the error of their ways, and, and to improve. Um, to receive that enlightenment, to then, to, to then move forward and do something else. So, you know, to approach their kids differently. Their, their children definitely deserve it. No child is, is born guilty. No child is born evil or anything like that. Um, and so I, every every child deserves to have loving loving parents, um, and and on that note, I think every child deserves to uh, be given the freedom to control their own education. Um, I definitely want education out of the hands of the state, no doubt, um, because I think it, it can be used for all sorts of nefarious purposes. But I also I also would encourage, and this is not anything I would pass a law for or anything like that, because of course I believe in the decentralized lawmaking process. Um, I would encourage parents to unschool and to keep their kids home from school and to explore and, and mentor them, and and you know live life to the fullest um, throughout their childhood. I think children, I think children need to need to. Be children. They need to act their age, and, and parents need to, ex, you know, set proper expectations for every age of childhood. A six-year-old cannot act like a twelve-year-old, and a twelve-year-old cannot act like a sixteen-year-old, and a sixteen-year-old cannot act like a twenty-four-year-old. Um, not, not, not to say that some people are mature for their age. It's certainly true, but overall, in general, our expectations need to be. Um, proper they need to be accurate you know so we shouldn't you know we shouldn't be getting angry over everything and really as parents we shouldn't be getting angry at all I know it's hard especially if all we see in our society especially how we were raised was you know we see anger anger and hate and resentment um, these are things that we have to and this kind of goes back to culture we've got to um, we've got to improve ourselves and we've got to get over that that's, that's definitely something that I over the last year uh, my wife and I have been working on. My wife is an absolute sweetheart, and she she grew up in Mexico City. Her parents were nonviolent with her. Um, I think she told me like maybe once she was swatted on the butt, and that was it. I mean, it wasn't even she didn't really feel it. It was kind of just an out of anger, knee jerk reaction by I think her mom. Um, other than that, I mean, her parents were very loving and peaceful. And, and I when we visited Mexico City, I saw that with her whole extended family. I saw parents who truly respected their kids. Um, and I and I think the effects of that are, are the types of family culture that we see coming out of places like Central and South America. I think it's beautiful. It's definitely something that was foreign to me. And I even kind of mocked it at first when we first got married. But now that I've kind of been in it, in it um, involved with it for seven, eight years, it, it's a it's a, a really beautiful thing. I, I think it's wonderful. Now, I sort of 
got her to be more violent than what was in her nature. And that was kind of hard for her to do. But at some point, she did start spanking as well. And so now we've 180 and now we're coming back. She's kind of like been looped around. And I, I think because I kind of led with the philosophical um, stuff, kind of led us to, to, to nonviolent parenting, I would say that it's been easier for me than her. But she does have the strength in her own childhood of how she was raised, and, and she's learning to tune back into that um, and that kind of thing. And so with anger and hate and resentment all around us in this society, um, it, it can be very easy to to not control that aspect of ourselves when we approach our kids. But we have to. We absolutely must. Our kids deserve it. And if we manage to do that, then when our kids get older, it's going to be that much easier for them to approach their kids that way. Again, the, the culture in Mexico, I mean, this is generations and generations where this type of thing has been passed on. I mean, it, 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 there's a marked difference. And I, and I live in a culture here in Salt Lake City, a Mormon culture, where family is important. And I, I definitely know Mormon families that, that were nonviolent and that kind of thing. But, and I, I don't know, maybe it's just my own naivete as far as my area. I didn't, I, you know, there are families I do know that are very peaceful with their kids. And I absolutely love it. And I, I, I do learn a lot from them. But then I, I see a lot of it. They're not. I mean, I, I used to 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 work uh, retail at, at um, a hardware store and... I mean, the way that some parents would smack their kids uh, arbitrarily, would yell at their kids, get angry, get ugly, get mean. I mean, right in public, too. I mean, I was almost glad that they were doing it in public because then I could give them the stink eye. <laughs> I kind of look at them and give them a look like, are you kidding me? But not that that's how we should be approaching it. Um, anyway, so um, where the unschooling comes in is really... Um, Kids will learn, will learn all sorts of things, you know, whether you want them to or not. I mean, so number one, we need to be a good example because they're going to learn a lot from us, right? We get, we got to do what we can do, um, but also they're going to learn all sorts of things about their world by living in their world. I think when you age segregate kids and you lock them in a virtual prison, and then you you feed them certain things. In, in a sense, um, because it's compulsory, in a sense, you are literally indoctrinating them um, to things you want them to learn. And, and a lot of these things, are, they're, they're benign things, but there's a lot of non-benign things, especially when it comes to history and, and the things that, that, that government schools want you to learn. And they, they definitely aren't going to teach you anything um, that makes them look bad. And there's plenty out there to make them look bad, but it's, it's, all, it's all taken out. I mean, it's, it's not stuff they're going to teach you in school. They're going to make the other guy look bad. Um, you know the whoever wins the war, you know the victors write the histories, and that's that's certainly the case with American history. Um, I, I you know I remember growing up and just thinking because you would you would learn about from from the independence, the War of Independence, Revolutionary War on up, you would learn about how awesome and how how kick ass America is, and it really did kind of put into me a pride, a nationalistic pride. Um, that, you know, I love this place. I love America. Yeah, I'm American. I'm the best. You know, I'm number one. Um, but the, 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 this world is full of human beings that are that are literally no better, no worse than I am. Um, they just have different circumstances. So I, I no longer hold those attitudes. I had to I had to really kind of drill them out of myself, get them out of there. Um, took a lot of study and a lot of years to do that. But it's definitely something that, that the schools teach um, and, you know, I think there's a lot of well-meaning people. I think there's a lot of wonderful teachers that, that truly are making some big personal sacrifices to, to do what they believe in. Um, but I don't, I don't think that's what kids need. I don't think that they need any sort of structured compulsory education. I think kids can't help learning when they're given the freedom and the tools um, and the opportunities to learn. They will. And, and so that's, that's the approach that we're taking with our kids. Um, and it's been fun. I mean, my son would be starting first grade, but he's not. And, and again, we gave him the option. Do you want to try school or not? I mean, it's, 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 it's his right to decide. And so we presented that to him and he said, no, why would I? <laughs> um, I, I hope he, he'll continue with that attitude. And it's really, it, it does put a lot of responsibility into us as parents into our hands with this, because we have to, 
make sure that that we are um, there for him to mentor them along the way and and to introduce ideas and to help them explore things that they're truly interested in because unschooling is very hands-on it's not at all neglectful um, it's very active parenting you've got to be with your kids and doing it and, and I, I truly believe that any parent in any situation can do this and, and where there is a will if somebody if a parent actually believes in it and learns the value and the benefits of it whether they're a single parent I mean, unless unless they don't have sole custody of their kids, unless they're divorced and their their ex spouse does, is I think it's something that every parent can do, um, utilizing you know the resources in society and in their own families. Um, so it's definitely something that is a is one of the fronts in my website is the radical unschooling, and and I'm I'm a beginner at it. You know, I'm just starting off here with this. Um, you know, I I study the principles and 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 I, I explore the internet and meet a lot of um, unschoolers, you know, unschooling parents and also adults who are unschooled. And I read their stories and I get to know them, you know, through their blogs or, or even in chat and whatnot. And it's it's just amazing. There's a lot of amazing people. We're actually we're going to try to make an unschooling conference next spring in Oregon um, that I think will be a lot of fun. It'll be a drive, but everybody I've talked to on their Facebook group says it's definitely worth the drive. And a lot of people drive further than I'm driving to get there. And they have videos on it um, showing the showing you know clips from the conference and it looks like a really fun thing. I think it's a, it'd be a good opportunity for my kids, especially my son, to meet other kids and he can gather email addresses and learn to to email and kind of have a pen pal that way. And so I'm kind of encourage that and it'll be good for me and my wife um, to meet a lot of other unschoolers because we meet we meet fellow homeschoolers here in our area in our neighborhood, um, but we don't have any other unschoolers that are around. Um, so I think that'll be good too and that'll be really fun. And if we do enjoy it, it will probably come either a yearly or by an annually or a biannually thing. So anyways, um, the radical unschooling and the peaceful parenting kind of go together because, you know, academics is not the only thing children need to learn. They need to learn the virtues. They need to learn values. They need to learn, um, you know, that cultural aspect. Um, they need to receive that enlightenment. They need to be they need to be given the freedom to kind of mark their own path, but they still need to be guided because they're children and and they don't know things and that's what parents are for as their stewards is to show them and so you know parents as they improve themselves then become the mentors for their own children and I think that will forge bonds and relationships that will um, that will last into the you know the rest of your life and into the eternities if you believe in that sort of thing um, so I think that is a big part of voluntarism the voluntary principle is is what happens in the home because that 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 you are directly um, affecting your children that you are influencing them more than you're influencing anybody else and they're getting from you they're learning from you more than anybody else is learning from you it's kind of the same thing I just said it two different ways from two different perspectives and so what you do in relation to your kids really says a lot about you and your principles and if you believe in the voluntary principle if you believe in nonviolence and and in not using force, then you have to exemplify that in your own home. And something else I wanted to add: my son is seven and my daughter is three. They're both going on seven and three. And my daughter will will go and find a toy that you know maybe my son put down for just a moment, and she'll take it. Now my son, I could teach him that he would be right. That he would be ethically justified to go and and rip that toy back out of her hands and get it back because it's his toy he had it first but that's not what we're teaching him. we're teaching him that look son that is your toy but what is the peaceful way to resolve this problem what can we do to get her to give you the toy back we can ask her that usually doesn't work let's go find something that she'll want either one of her own toys or, or some other toy of yours that you, you're not playing with right now and let's trade her for it. That usually works. Sometimes that doesn't work. And then I talked to my son, I said, son, you know, she's going to, she's going to play with it for five minutes and she's going to get bored. Let's just wait. And he's usually kind of a little ornery about it while we wait. But at some point she does and he's able to, you know, um, reclaim his toy and move on it whether it's it's usually his little Nintendo DS we recently bought her own Nintendo DS so 
that should um, subside a little bit. But I'm sure she'll find something, as all kids do. Kids like to push each other butt, push each other's buttons. But my kids also absolutely adore each other. I mean, there are so many moments that they share together where they're giggling with each other and teasing each other and playing with each other that these times where there's actually a conflict or a dispute where mom and dad have to intervene, and again, we intervene peacefully, are, are few and far in between. Um, so it's, 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 it's been an interesting experience for me, my wife, um, and I'm sure for my kids. It's definitely, um, it's definitely uh, a path that I'm glad we're on. It's, it's going to be a lifelong journey for all of us. Um, I, I, you know, I definitely hope that it's something that they'll see the value in as they get older and, and, and they'll want to continue with their own children. I'll definitely encourage that. I won't force them to, of course. Um, but it's, it's something that I think as a voluntarist that I think that something as a voluntarist is required is, is to treat our kids that way. I don't think that's a highly encouraged thing as, as some of the other stuff I talked about. I think voluntarism does require the principles, the voluntary principle I think does require us um, treating our kids that way um, and really teaching through our example how to approach people that way. I think it's something that they're going to they're gonna grow up with and they're going to turn around and, and, and treat others that way. But as kids, they need help. I mean, they're, they're, they see something they want, they're going to grab for it. You know, they're going to they're gonna use force because that's the language little kids speak in, in a certain regard. And so that's why we're there to help them and to navigate them through that. And a lot of parents might need help with that. And there's there's plenty of books you can buy and read, and I recommend them on, on the website. There's there's some wonderful Facebook groups on nonviolent parenting that you can join and, and get questions to your answers. You get experts and just really fellow parents who have been through it or are going through it um, answering questions. So it's definitely something you can get help on. Whether you, your, your own immediate family might not, I mean, I don't know anybody personally in my family that's really approaching their kids this way. They're doing the opposite the way that I used to. So it's, I don't really have a, a, a personal um, in real life support group for that. But thanks to the internet and to, to technology, um, I can go on the internet and go on Facebook and I can find the help that I need and I've definitely gained a lot. So that 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 really is kind of bringing um, the voluntarism as means um, idea out. Um, and so I think I said a lot more here than what I said in the article, but check it out. It's titled Voluntarism Transcends Anarchism. You can go to everything-voluntary.com and search that. Right now it's kind of at the top of the page um, if you watch this video. Um, when it's published, um, you, you can get that. So, and I would definitely also encourage um, buying my book, or you don't even have to buy it, just go to the, to the same website. You can read each chapter there for free, or you can buy it. That's nice too. Um, like I said, it's something I hope to write a little bit more on as time, uh, as time goes, and uh, definitely I want to talk about it. I want to, I want to foster that discussion. Um, recently, um, and this is, this is something I'll post on the website, probably the next couple of weeks, Stefan Molyneux did interview Dana Martin, who has been influential in the unschooling movement. She runs a couple of conferences, published a book um, on unschooling. And to see <clears throat> to see him uh, make that jump, because he's always, he's, he's always been behind the nonviolent parenting, at least for the last little while, um, really probably since his daughter was born. I understand his daughter's three and a half or so. He's, he's really kind of been pushing that front. And I'm, I'm Absolutely glad to see that, but it looks like now he's kind of getting into the unschooling, and I and I imagine as his daughter gets older, um, that he will um, get more involved with that. At least I hope to see that um, get more involved with that and, and push that front. It's an important front. Um, homeschooling is better than public schooling. Private schooling is better than public schooling. Homeschooling is better than those. Unschooling is the ideal. It's the best. I think everybody can do it. Everybody should do it. Um, I, I, I think we should have unschooling kids running up and down the street. I think to have a community like that would just be absolutely awesome. Uh, you know, I don't expect to see that in my lifetime at all. Um, but I think that is the educational model of the next century and beyond. The way the technology is going, the, you know, sticking kids in, in desks um, for eight hours a day and, and this kind of thing, teaching them things that they're not even going to remember when they, they grow up. Um, is 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 antiquated and I, I i i hope that it will soon be obsolete and we can finally move past it i'm not planning on government leading that charge at all um I, it's going to happen um at the what you, what you would say the grassroots level it's going to happen with us as individuals and as parents making that change and 
homeschooling ha has become more popular. Unschooling has definitely become more popular within the homeschooling movement. I'm very happy to see that. Um, you know, I'm I'm a I'm a convert. It's <laughs> something that I'm doing with my kids, and and you know I'm I'm encouraging. And so as long as I can 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 be a little bit better at communication and not uh, not not saying inflammatory things and that sort of thing, I I think that we can make progress. Um, but that's just what I wanted to talk about. So. Um, like I said, I'll, I'll do what I can to develop these ideas and put them on the website. So please follow the website. You can get an email subscription. You can follow it with uh, RSS or an Atom feed. Um, or you can like like the page on the top right and you'll see the post show up on your Facebook news feed. That's another way. So um, I just want to say keep up a good fight and uh, you know enjoy life. Let's have fun. And um, that's it. Thank you.